Hi, I'm Tara Shaw, and this is Brother Luca sleeping on the Swedish sofa. Today we're going to talk about coat of arms. So a coat of arms, like this series on the wall where we're showing many different ones, was actually a tunic that they would wear over their armor in battle with the family coat of arms uh, embellished on it. Now what that did, it identified their allegiances, possibly adoptions into the family, uh, alliances, so you wouldn't go to battle against your, your uh, friend or allegiance. So each coat of arms was very different. They modified those later to also include not only the family house, but the profession, which I find absolutely fascinating. Now, I bought this coat of arms in uh, Port Devon, and that's a charming market right outside of Paris, and I've actually bought fur coats on, hanging on a fence at five o'clock in the morning. It is known for smalls. Uh, one of the things that really attracted me to this was the large series. And um, also, coat of arms was very important when you were a knight in a tournament. So you would be able to see which house you were rooting for. So what is so interesting here is we see a lot of regional names in this coat of arms. There are birth lots that we have in the city of New Orleans. And here is a de Saint Priest, beautiful, beautiful name. Here you're going to see where you can see the profession. They were wheat farmers, but you also see the medals from the battles. So um, my husband has a coat of arms, uh, Robert Walsh. So Walsh is, one of their symbols is a swan with a, an arrow through it, which the motto is pierced but not dead, which I um, think is very interesting. So if you don't have your own coat of arms, you can certainly come here and buy one. Thanks so much for joining me. See you next time.